Hey everybody, this is Michael Pavlovich, and in this video we're updating my previous AMD Threadripper workstation with some new components. We started way back in the day with the Threadripper 1950X, updated that to the 2990WX, and today we're going to be leveling up to the 3rd gen AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3970X. Kindly provided to me by the fine folks over at AMD. Everybody, this is a beast of a CPU. 32 cores, 64 threads, and we'll dive into what makes the CPU so very ridiculous. But before we get into that, let's start with what's going to be holding all of this together, which is the ROG Zenith 2 Extreme Gaming motherboard, with which I may have a bit of a bone to pick later on. Anyway, this is the brand new Socket STRX4 with 16 power stages, Wi-Fi 6, 10 gigabit Ethernet, and with the third gen Threadripper that we saw earlier, it's going to have 72 usable lanes with the new PCIe Gen 4. In fact, AMD is currently the first and only desktop processor, as of this recording, to support PCIe Gen 4. Now, we're going to get into more RAM detail later, but as you can see here, we have 8 DIMM quad-channel DDR memory support. And as we take a look at the pre-mounted I.O. shield, you'll see a lot of USB options. The 7 super speed marked in red are the ones with the 10 gigabits per second indicator, type A and type C. The blue are the Gen 1 super speed at 5 gigabits per second and one super speed gen 2x2 type c at 20 gigabits per second flipping it over onto the back you're going to see the slot for that fifth nvme m.2 drive but we'll talk more about storage in a bit next up we have the amd ryzen threadripper 3970x again this is a 32 core 64 thread processor with 144 meg cache 3.7 base and up to 4.5 max boost clock and as we mentioned before with the upgrade from pcie gen 3 to gen 4 giving us four times the link speed from the previous generation, which means higher memory speeds and, due to the new I.O. die chiplet handling all of the communication, including your four memory channels going straight to your RAM, which is going to be your quad channel memory config, and the CPU chiplets, which can contain six or eight cores, which gets you your total core count. And because of the infinity fabric, where you have two connectors from each chiplet to the I.O. die, this means that any cluster of cores can reach any memory configuration. So no more forced NUMA nodes as with the second gen Threadripper, and you can hop from doing your development work right into gaming without missing a beat, all while being incredibly stable and predictable. We can pop out the physical chip here and take a quick look at it, and carefully put it away before I accidentally drop it. Next, let's talk about our cooling solution, which in this case is going to be the Kraken X62 280mm liquid cooler. I do want to say if you're using a cooler from a previous gen 2 Threadripper build, namely the 2990WX and the 2970X Threadripper, that cooling solution should work just fine for your Gen 3 Threadripper, with a caveat in my case. For example, my previous build's Noctua NHU14S TR4 SP3 CPU cooler worked perfectly fine with the new build. However, the fans had some overlapping trouble with the dim slots, and if you had two fans like I did, you've got two dims blocked. You can move the fans up on the heatsink to allow for RAM clearance, but in my case would mean leaving off the sides of my case. Speaking of memory clearance, the Kraken blocked one of the dim slots as well. Neither of these cooling solutions were a problem on my previous Republic of Gaming Zenith Extreme X399 EATX HEDT motherboard. And after some quick unscientific measuring, it looks like they moved the RAM slots about half an inch closer for shorter traces and better memory speeds. Which is cool, but I'm going to have to look for some new cooling if I want to go back to my previous 128GB of RAM and close my case. Next up, let's take a look at this new SSD. We've got the 4 Series MP600 NVMe PCIe Gen 4x4 M.2 SSD. <gasps> Up to 4950 megabits per second read, 4250 write, 680k IOPS, 4k random read, 600k random write. I'll be honest, they lost me at the end there, but again, with the PCIe Gen 4 doubling the bandwidth of PCIe Gen 3, you're getting up to 16 gig a second of transfers per lane, something that these new SSDs take full advantage of. This one right here is one terabyte, and as you can see, gone are the days of SATA cords and power cords gunking up your case. You can plug these right into your motherboard and call it a day. To avoid thermal throttling on these drives, you're going to see on the front of the motherboard an aluminum heat spreader right over where you're going to plug in two of your M.2 drives. You'll pop that off, plug in your drives, peel off the little plastic that's covering the thermal paste type stuff, and screw the heat spreader back on. Now, this MP600 comes with a heat sink, so I suppose you can either leave the heat spreader off if you're going to use this type, or remove the M.2 aluminum heatsink. I opted for leaving the aluminum motherboard heat spreader off. For even more storage, this motherboard comes with a DIMM.2 module that passively cools two M.2 drives with metal heatsinks that not only keep your build looking clean, but also allow space for two more drives that plug right into your motherboard. 
So to recap, you've got the two slots under the aluminum heatsink cover on the front, two spaces available in the DIM.2 module, and a fifth slot at the rear of the board. Last up, we have our RAM. This is the Corsair Dominator Platinum RGB 3600 speed DDR4. The third gen Threadripper inherits the memory controller work that was done from the third gen Ryzen, which means better compatibility, faster overclocking, and for the super nerds out there, there's now support for 32 gig dual ranked unbuffered DIMMs, increased max capacity to 256 gig, and available ECC support on select TRX40 motherboards. For the people more at my level, these little LEDs up there on the edge are going to light up for you. So I know that was only a five minute video, but I had more shenanigans going on in this video than I have in the previous 10 years combined. Uh, if you have any future content where you want to see me talk about video editing or video shenanigans, we can uh, certainly do that. And of course, this being a hardware video with updated hardware components, uh, any content I come out with, I'm going to shout out any sort of hardware speed or performance enhancements as it's relevant to the content. And also when I'm live streaming, if you have any questions about hardware performance, uh, just shout it out. And if I don't have an answer, I'll try and track one down for you. But again, I hope that was helpful if you're uh, looking to kind of build a workstation or uh, see what the new component upgrades are uh, that are available. Also, keep your peepers peeled for future updates from AMD. Something tells me they're not quite finished with the absolute domination of the high-end performance workstation space that they've been in the past few years. So absolutely expect more exciting things to come from them. Anyway, thanks again, everybody, and we'll be back to our regularly scheduled content starting now.